yet, you know, that's they're trying, they're trying to gaslight you, right? Just like they try to gaslight you and say, oh, your kid's different. Oh, your, your son's sensitive or he's artistic. Oh, maybe he needs to change his gender. Wh- what are you talking about? Leave kids alone. See, that's the problem when people are just in a state of nihilism. They can't allow boundaries to be there. They have to overturn everything. They're in a state of rage against nature. Anger, viciousness, hatred of nature. That's what this is about. And they only can smuggle that rage and that bigotry through the perspective of, oh, I'm trying to protect the kid who's different. No, you're not. You're trying to exploit the kid who's different, ruin his life in in many ways, because you're going to get him to do things or her to do things that will damage them in many different ways. Look at what happened to John Money, the founder of Gender Identity Studies. Look at what happened to his original experiments of the twins, the Reimer twins. They both killed themselves when they were adults. They couldn't stand what he had done to them. The sick stuff. That's the founder of this ideology that is now infecting and imposing its religious claims of faith into your local school board, even here in Polk County, Florida, supposed to be, you know, conservative DeSantis country, and they're actively going against what people want. They don't want to have anything to do with it. But yet, guess what? These people want to impose their way anyways. They can't allow people to just think differently and be themselves. They got to say, oh, if you are different, you've got to do this. Oh, if you do this, then you're this. Right? And and look, you know, if adults want to do whatever they want to do, that's fine. But when you try to impose a language, you try to impose violence and aggression on people by making laws about, you know, pronouns. Now you're showing your hand that this is not about the misfits. This is about power and control over people trying to create a new religion that imitates Christianity because that's what Christianity does. Christianity says, hey, let's defend the weak. Let's defend the misfits. Let's defend those who are scapegoated. And so does this one says, well, we're going to defend the, the victims. We're just trying to stop bullying. No, you're not trying to stop bullying. People get bullied for all kinds of things because of their accent, because of their height, their weight, their hair color, their wealth. They don't have the right, they don't have expensive shoes like everybody else has around them. And that's what they do. They use the fact that people get picked on as a smokescreen to say, well, therefore, we are the defenders of the weak. You're not the defenders of the weak. If they're defenders of the weak, why is it that all the corrupt, giant, multinational corporations are on board with their garbage ideology and religious imposition on the little kids? They're with the extremely powerful, the richest, most powerful entities of corporate power in the world we have ever known in human history are deeply on board with what they're doing. So how are they the defenders of the weak and the misfits? When everything, you know, they always say the revolution will not be televised, right? Everything about this supposed underdog ideology is televised and completely saturated with TV support. When has a true revolution for underdogs against the powerful ever been so completely saturated with Hollywood, music, entertainment, corporate, bank, everything supporting it? Government, military? (laughs) Give me a break. How dumb are we supposed to believe that that's some kind of, you know, ragtag Defense of victims. It's pathetic. It's an insult to any intelligent person to consider such stupidity to be the case. It's not the case. What's true is that everybody should be protected from bullying and everybody should be treated with respect and dignity, that everybody's a sinner, and that we're not going to impose, you know, our way onto people through bullying, through coercion. And we're not going to go into kids' uh, schools and force them into this political and religious conversation. We're just not. And that's why I I keep going back to this idea that the only thing we can do is to take care of our community, to take care of ourselves, to 
tell the truth, to do good art, to stay out of debt, to live not by lies, but by the truth. The folks who are behind the social construction stuff, they believe that language constructs reality. But their view of language is very religiously dull and myopic. They say that language is nothing but violence, really. And it's everything about language is a power play. But they're right about one thing. Language does construct reality, but the language that is spoken is the word of God. Logos. In the beginning was the word. And that word spoken is what sustains and creates and manifests reality on every level of our existence. And so what they want to say is that there is no discernible truth. There is no discernible objective truth about language. It's just subjective wars of power and mimetic rivalry and covetousness and violence. You don't like the way your body is. You want to covet the way somebody else's body looks. You can mutilate yourself in defiance of nature not giving you the body you want. You can mutilate yourself and you can take hormones that can cause diseases and cancers down the road. You can live in a disembodied state of Gnosticism rather than loving what God has given all of us and being grateful for what we have. 